What's up, YouTube? It's your favorite commentator here, Gabriel. And, you know, show about nothing. And I'm just here to kind of talk to you guys about my weekend, my last few uh, days since I posted. Um, things have been great, honestly. <laughs> Had a great weekend. Had a great weekend. It was really, it was really dope. Uh, got to see a lot of old friends. And I kind of want to jump into, uh, I don't know. Do I really want to talk about that? I don't know. So much in the social media and in the media, it's about relationships. It's about, and my, F, my FYP page on TikTok is being flooded with like these guys who preach this alpha male stuff or these women who preach being an alpha woman or finding an alpha man or these guys talking about being a beta. And I'm gonna be honest with you. None of that stuff matters, bro. None of it matters. None of it matters. If you are true to yourself, you are someone who fully is comfortable with yourself, then it doesn't matter what, one, what people label you as or what they think you are. And two, what society like says you should be because of how you're acting. The biggest mis misconception, in my opinion, is, oh, society says, if I act this way, that's that. Oh, so I must be that. No, 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 that's not how that works, man. Like, you know, that's not how that works. Like, <laughs> but everyone's trying to get paid by, you know, putting labels on stuff or saying this, you should listen to them or their way or their method or their thoughts are the best. It's just sad because I see people kind of, you know, configuring themselves or moving different than what they normally would. Or, you know, I'm all for like bettering yourself, though. Like that doesn't mean you shouldn't do that. But when it comes down to changing who you are, it's like for the worst, you know, Kevin Samuels is a, is a buzzword right now, a buzz name. Right. And he gets on these this, this podcast or whatever and tells women how they need to lower them, themselves. Right or lower their standards because they're not worth. And I was like, bro, let's say what you're saying is somewhat, has holds some type of weight. One, your delivery is whack. Two, why are you disrespecting women like that? Because I'm gonna disrespect them, be honest with them. Okay, but there's a way to be honest with somebody and without having a shirt coated, but also not, you know, call them names like that. But double standards are real. They are. I hate them. I tell people I hate them. I know people hate them when I bring them up, but they're so real. <laughs> and it, it just sucks. But that's a whole nother. Let's get into it. Why not? I ain't, got no, I, I ain't doing nothing. Show about nothing, right? Double standards are here. Uh, I was talking to this guy a few weeks ago. And he was talking about how, you know, he, he's starting to, you know, get some notoriety with social media or, you know, whatever. He's like, it sucks because women can just get on whatever and do nothing. They just be attractive, be pretty. And they, people give them things or they make money. I'm like, okay. I'm just like, okay, I hear you, but are you upset about that? Well, it's not fair. I don't think you use the word fair. But it was just, I'm just like, but why does it matter? You know, like, I really, I get on TikTok, YouTube, Instagram. Yes, women will, can do X, Y, Z and get all these followers, get all these whatever. Get, okay. Like, I don't get offended by that. I'm like, hey, if you can get that by doing nothing, why wouldn't you? Let's be real. Let's be real. If I told you, all you had to do was get in front of a camera and smile, and people would flock to you, why wouldn't you do that? Some people don't like it. I've met women and men who are like, yeah, that's just not me. And they could if they wanted to. I'm not superficial like that. It ain't about being superficial. It's not. I don't think it's that at all. I sometimes think it's about, okay, I don't have really a skill, or I have a skill that's, trans that's transferable or whatever the word is but I don't know how to use it right now. Or it's not hitting enough people, right? So I'm gonna use this 
to get the, the eyes. And then I'm going to use, once I get the eyes, I'm going to start showing my skill to elevate myself even more. What's the problem? Men do it, right? It's just it's just weird, man, how people sometimes just get in these, like, pockets or they get in this, like, blinded mode of going, oh, that's I got to do works just as hard. Well, because you don't look like that or you don't have the ability to or you don't have the access to, like, and that's just sometimes how it is. Like, I would love for you guys to find my page and go, oh, my God, this guy's dope. We're going like, to subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Like, like, that'd be dope. However... When that does happen, it'll be because the work has been put in, right? The grind has the grind has been has been made. Like I'm I'm putting in the hours and hours and hours, and you guys are appreciative of that by liking, subscribing, right? Showing love, hating, I don't know, whatever the case may be. But like some people just so I watched this clip of Steve Harvey, his uh, his little thing where he was talking to Cam Newton, right? They were smoking cigars. He was like, you can't Google success, right? You can't Google, um, what do you say success? You can't Google, what was, what do you use? The term when you, ah, when you put in years and years of work. Ah, uh, <laughs> I can't think of the word. I'm so upset. You can't Google success. You can't Google experience. You can't Google experience, right? He said, there's no, there's no escalator. There's no elevator to the top. There are steps. And you guess what? Some people's steps are really small. And some people's steps are a lot larger, right? Somebody starts out at ground zero, their next step is 100,000. That's just how they, that's how them stairs work for them right now. When they get to the higher, it might be smaller, but we only see, because our steps are smaller, we're like, I took 30,000 steps to get to 1,000. You took two. And you upset about that? That's that's just how my story is being. My story is right. That's how my story been played out right now. Not saying yours can't get there. Not saying mine can't get there. But like, don't equate somebody else's moves to how yours should be. And that's where, like the you know, it like it kind of breaks down to like in the whole double standard thing. If you're a beautiful woman and people want to give you things because you're beautiful, is that your fault? If anything, I go well. Y'all like it, so. She ain't doing nothing. There's beautiful men out there do nothing. And people admire them, like give them things. Is it his fault? Or is society going, hey, we should because he looks, they look a certain way. That's why I hate. That's why I hate on that? Right? But that's the whole, that's like I say, man. It's, I, I feel, I have differences of opinions sometimes when it comes to certain guys that I know personally and that I see. And they ain't me trying to be like, oh, they're, what they, what, what they preaching, what they talking about ain't, ain't, is wrong. It's not sometimes like this. It's just there are different ways to go about the same thing. You know what I'm saying? Like, I learned at a very young age because, you know, I had I had a father or I had people in my life who were old school. And old school, hey, it's one way to do that. I'm like, your way is outdated. It's old. It Yeah, it might get the same result, but my way is easier. It's faster. It's more efficient. Like, why can't I do it? Because your way is what? Harder? But your way is, it shows you got grit and determination. But mine shows ingenuity and, and uh, can't think of where I'm having a block right now. But like, I don't know. It's just, there's a hundred thousand ways to do one thing in today's society now. And why can't we just be cool with that? If you're a way, if you like doing the hundred step process, that's fine. Don't hate me because my process takes five steps. If anything, you should you should be bigging me up, right? But that's that is what it is. Weekend was great. <laughs> we'll start right there. Uh, weekend was great. Didn't do too much. Have an AAU tournament coming up this weekend. Um, here in here in Columbus. <sighs> Got practice today. It's Tuesday, and I'm hoping you know my players come out ready to get locked in, ready to play. I really want to get a dub, and when I mean dub, a championship for our age group. So. You know, I hate losing in the first round. You know, that first day is usually pool play, right? You play your, your three or four teams. They seed you out. And then the second day, it's like, okay, tournament time. You know, and typically it's on a, a big a big tournament. That second day, you play about, you have potential to play about three games, maybe four. It's a long day. 
but it's like you want to be there all day on Sunday, you know? You want to say, we got here at 9.30 and we're not leaving at 6 because you won all day. Yeah, the girls are tired. The kids are tired. Yeah, you're tired from coaching and screaming and yelling, you know, you. but the parents are like, oh, my God. We're but when you're winning and you get that trophy and at any, that Monday you go to school, oh, why was we can't? Yeah, we won, we won a tournament. We're the best team in our age group in that tournament. That's that's dope, you know. I want that for my kids, man. You know, I want them to have that 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 pride of saying I'm on a championship level team. You know, and there's a little bit of selfishness in there. I want to be I want to be a championship level coach. So you know, you really want to. I put the work in. I put the hours in. Just like with this, creating content, right? I put the work in. My coaching, coming up with plays, going over game plans, schemes. The biggest thing I've learned in the last few months or years is figuring out how. Because a lot of coaches, in my opinion. They try and put their players into their scheme. It's like trying to put a puzzle piece that don't fit into the puzzle, right? Versus going, okay, what scheme would benefit these players, right? Like, in my opinion, that works best because then you allow the players to kind of excel in their given role without having to, like, really show off their weaknesses or, you know, like, have everyone see their weaknesses, right? If I got a player that likes going a shooting mid-range jump shots off the screens, I'm going to have them run a lot, a, lot of, a lot of down screens, a lot of UCLA screens, right? A lot of uh, flare screens, right? For that particular player, right? I wouldn't have them coming up picking rolls with the ball in their hand. That makes no sense. You know what I'm saying? I wouldn't have them being a, a pick and pop player because they don't know how to – I mean, I'm teaching them these things, but, like, when it comes to AAU season, it's really tough to – in my opinion, I, I'm, you know, I'm still a young coach. I've been doing AAU three years, so don't, you know, don't, don't kill me in the comments for this. But it's like one of the things where AAU, I get them for two days a week for two hours, then we play. They all are different, a, uh, different skill levels. They all play at different schools. So it's like a mesh of, a concoction or a mesh of all this stuff that I got to try and bring together for nine weeks in the summer with four hours of practice each week. And they all play the sports and all do other stuff and, you know, the good teams, yeah, we're a pretty solid team. I'm not gonna hate on us like that. Uh, but I also have noticed, like you know, it's just today's players, their their skill level might be higher, but their basketball knowledge is not as high as it used to be. Um, yeah, they can do all the dribbling and shooting and all the moves, but I'm like, okay, what's a pin down? Show me a you know a flare cut, an elbow cut. Like, show me how do you set a proper screen, right? And I'm getting kind of in the basketball stuff here, but like. I think about this stuff a lot, <laughs> you know. Um, let's run show drill. Show, I love show drill, right? And it's like, we, you know, where are you supposed to be upside? How's your body play supposed to be? What are you seeing? You know, when you want to deny, are you in the lane? Are you allowing the catch? When you break down on, on your closeout, what, what, how, how are you? You're a varsity level player. How are, you, how are you breaking down? How are you taught to break down? Okay, this is how you taught. Well, as your coach now, this is how I want you to do it. We force the baseline. We force, we force the middle. Like, you know, which, you know, are they right-handed, left-handed shooter? Because most right-handed players, like me, I like driving left before I pull up. You know, you got to know these things, right? Defensively, I, was, I, I wasn't the greatest defender, but I, I prided myself on being able to pick up on rhythms, right? Great offensive players know how to kind of play outside of a rhythm, like in their own rhythm. That makes sense. Like Kyrie Irving is a perfect example of this. He has combos. He has counters to the counters to his counters, to his counters, right? So as a defender, you – rarely can get him because he has no, like, rhythm. Some players, they have what is called a bag, and they have maybe three to four go-to moves or maybe one or two counters off of them. You play them enough, you start to figure out the rhythm. Oh, he going, when he go left, right, cross, he wants to come back, and then if I take that away, he's going to spin, so I know I'm going to give him that so I can kind of make it harder for him, or I want him to spin so I can... Enforcement defense, right? You kind of pick one of these things, right? Great offensive players, at no point you going, I don't know what he's about to do. It's like, I think he's going to do this, but then he does so much, you're like, oh, okay, that was new. Or like, yeah, I baited him, and he, I took I took, the, I took, took his bait, you know? These new kids don't know how to do that. I'm not a pick up and read on that type of stuff. That, that's the basketball. Follow uh, my basketball podcast. Uh, pay, uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Give me a full, my brain's all over the place today. Give me a full podcast, Apple, Spotify. 
Google Play, or wherever you get your podcast. It's a dope one. We talk talk with coaches around the country about just sports and just basketball and their coaching journey. It's really dope. Um, but yeah, like this is a show about nothing. I ain't got nothing, man. I'm just talking right now. Somebody said this is like your diary, like your journal. I'm like, sure, you can call it that. You don't get that deep on there. Well, not yet. No one's like asked me to get deep. I can get deep. I can get real deep, like deep where y'all might go. This guy is this is he sad? But you know, we ain't there yet. YouTube, we can get there. Maybe next time. But uh, yeah, this has been a show about nothing. If you stuck around this long, appreciate you. And I will see you next time. Peace.